Yeah. What's going on, y'all? You know who it is. Mr. Warmack, a.k.a. Low Rent, a.k.a. The Ignorant American, a.k.a. The Truth As You Know It, a.k.a. Dirty Business, a.k.a. The Jet Jaguar of YouTube. Hey, folks. How you doing today? You know it is in all of my glory. It's Mr. Warmack, and I'm back in the building today. Today, I'm going to talk about some topic that uh, I see on Facebook. But it's not, I'm going to talk about the topic itself and the overall implications as far as it's, it's, it's not only just the topic itself, it's the far-reaching, I don't want to say, emphasis on the, the overall the, the overall aspect of it. Now, I was on Facebook one time, well, many times I'm on Facebook. And if you know who my name is on Facebook, add me on Facebook, add me to all your social media. But I... And we were talking about, there was a, I was in this one group, and I'm in, I said, I'm in many groups on Facebook, so, and me on Facebook. And there was a statement, a picture, and there was a statement that said, uh, Michael Kors, to the fact, doesn't want black people to wear his clothing, or he gets mad the fact that Michael, that black people wear his clothing. Now, that picture was put up in the group, and automatically, you know, you know what happens when this stuff like this happens. 80% to 90% of the black people went on a tangent. Well, we shouldn't buy his stuff, which that's the logic, you're gonna still buy it, but uh, they say, uh, oh, that's how they really think, and uh, this and that, and uh, this is messed up. Did he, I don't care if he said that this is messed up. Uh, you know the usual rigmarole with what goes on behind the scenes, and this, this is what they said. Now, myself and others, now me personally, what I did when I saw that statement, now I remember, I, I remember Tommy Hilfiger, when he went through a similar situation with this, where he really said something like that. But he went on, he went on Oprah, the damage control, he did all the whole nine yards. So I remember that situation. So what I did, being a critical thinker, I said to myself, well, you can't really believe everything that's on the internet, so being the thinker that I am, I did what anybody with common sense would do, and I did my own research. And doing my own research, guess what I found out? Guess what I dug up? I dug up that um, the story was false. It's uh, there's, a, there's a lot of... Um, Nowadays, there's a lot of football media out there. You got Fox Fake News. There's a lot of other sites that are it's joke news, they're, but they're they're almost they look serious, but they're, they're jokes like the Onion stuff like that. They they look like they're really news, but it's all it, it's it's comedy. And this is what this was. And then and, and uh, what it was is I kept reading into it. And I was going to different sources, and I said, you know, I was looking at this and like. All the sources said the same thing, that this was a fake, that he did not say any of this. So I went back to the group, I said, hey, look, man, I said, uh, this group, this is fake, you know, here's the links, and I put, I put there are these links. And then I heard, you know, the usual, oh, well, he probably did say this and that, and now, and here's my problem. People were gullible. Black folks, yes, we are, we're gullible. See, we've been riding this, we've been riding the, uh, the D, the Democratic Party, and we were, they've been the Pied Piper, and they've been leading, not all of us, they've, they've been leading most of our asses down the road, any little tune he plays, you will march for that motherfucker, you will, you will, you will die off of it, you will go to the end of the world for that DNC. And this is the problem, a lot of you don't want to do your research, like to me, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, he just signed Nicki Minaj to a deal, I think, Michael Kors did. Now, I mean, I have a Michael Kors bag, I have a dude bag, and there's not one of the fake ones, but you think that you guys did, I got a real one. And uh, so, this was like, I'm thinking to myself, look man, I haven't even broke that bag out yet. I said, I was getting mad, because I was saying to myself, as much grip as I laid down on this bag, he says this, and I'm like, spot my hat to either probably give it away or throw it away or something like that or probably go on ebay but uh that was the problem i had i had the problem of 
And there's a couple other people in there too, but I gotta give credit where credit is due. It wasn't just myself. There's others that said, this dude didn't say that. And then like like we all knew the we knew the Hill figure situation. And everybody was like, Well Tommy Hill figure said it. Well yeah, Tommy Hilfiger said it because you had proof he said it and he admitted he said on Oprah. I think I didn't see the Oprah part, but he to a certain degree he admitted it. And uh well, with the Michael Ford situation, it first of all, let me say, it was fake news again. I don't want to keep bringing this up. It was fake news. So let me get that off the bat. I don't want you guys running with the ball saying, well, I said this, I said X, Y, Z. It was fake news, first of all. So my point was, why don't you people get up there and do your research? Well, everybody was like, well, because everything you believe is true on the Internet. Huh? People were being real sarcastic. I'm thinking to myself, people are getting college educations off the internet, you stupid bastard. I said, not everything, I said, if you think something is not true, how many, how many search engines do you have on your space bar, on your tool bar, on your, in your web bar? How many, how many search things do you have on your cell phone? Look this shit up. This shit is not hard for you to look up if you want to look it up. What it is is people are lazy and they're going to believe what they're willing to believe regardless. Like I said, when this came up, I was mad at the fact that, like, I just spent some grip on this bag. I'm like, are you for real? Now I'm going to have to put on eBay and shit. So I looked it up. And I looked like I went to a lot of sources. And they all said the same thing. It was just a rumor. It was a joke. But it, I, I just get mad that, like, you should shows you how easily black folks can be led down the water. I mean, hell, you don't have to lead the black people to like. You know how you lead a horse to water? You don't even have to do that with black folks. You just can. You just have to hint that there's water, and they're gonna get riled up. But uh, this is one of the things that this is. This is how the political party, you know, preys on you guys with the Sharptons and the Jacksons. They don't. Uh, they 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 don't. They don't show you anything. They tell you so. Well, they never lied to us, would they? Let me tell you folks something. Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson, for better or worse, are politicians. I mean, you may look at them as the leaders of the black brigades or whatever. I mean, they're, to me, they're politicians. Jesse Jackson is still has the same slogan he had when he first, when he first did the national scene. And uh, Sharpton... After Barack Obama gets out of office, Sharpton's best bet is to move to Kenya or somewhere where he's, you know, can't be federally, where he's federally protected. Because I see people blow up in arms over this dude once Barack Obama gets out of office. That's just my two cents on that situation. But as far as black people being gullible, it's the truth. You know, all you, all you gotta do is racially, I mean, it's just, it's, it's absolutely part of how young America is. Because all you got to do is racially incite something and people go in the left field. Because, like I said, there are other races do it too. Like, you can put a, a black, like, like black folks, I mean, not white, white folks. Richard Sherman could say something and everybody's going to classify him as a thug. But, like, at the same time, everybody don't know he was like, what, like the top 10% of his graduating class at Stanford. He got a degree at Stanford, number one. How many black folks you know got a degree at Stanford? Number two, he comes from uh, his family, the working family anyway. So it wasn't like, you know, see, you, you guys tag him, even though he's from the, the hood, as they say. What, you, what a lot of people don't understand is a lot of people don't want, want to say this. There's a lot of working families in the hood. That's why the hood's propped up. It isn't because of all the dope that's in the hood. The hood is propped up because all the working families are taking care of the hood. It's the working families whose taxes are taking care of the hood. It's not the city themselves. It's the, the people that live there. That are there's a working class that lives there. They just a lot of like a lot of people say. Well, they don't want to move out the hood. A lot of people love where they live. And it, it, to you, maybe a, a ghetto, or maybe war down, maybe a trailer park. To somebody else, that's their goal line. How can I like 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 like? Let me use myself as an example. I was born in Crown Heights, Brooklyn. If you don't know where Crown Heights, Brooklyn, look it up. We moved outside of Pittsburgh. So what, what I do, in my high school years, after high school, I could have easily stayed around there and been like everybody else. But, you know, I, I did what I did, and after a while, I just moved. I, I moved back to, I guess, 
I, I, I was born in the hood, we lived in the hood, we moved out of the hood, and I moved back to the hood. It's like, to me, I'm just comfortable with it. And like a lot of people were going to get mad because they, they were going, they're going, they didn't know this, but you're stupid, that's why. But as far as me, I'm just, I'm just more comfortable, you're, you're more comfortable with the people you look like. That's just, that's just natural and common sense. I'm not, I'm not talking anything new here. You know, it ain't like I'm like, you know, this ain't like fucking landing on fucking Mars. Like white people are more comfortable around other white people. Black people are more comfortable around other black people. Hispanics are more comfortable around other Hispanics. Asians and Native Americans and so on. So to me, it's nothing racial. It's just you two you're comfortable with. I have lots of white friends I'm cool with. I have white friends who back home who I drink with. Uh, we used to drink and we used to fight all the time. So it's like, but like I said, I, they ha they hang with a lot of more white friends than I do. I hang with more black friends than they do. See what I'm saying? So it's just like a lot of a lot of a lot of stuff is not racial. It's how it's perceived, and, uh, and what hurts what hurts black folks. And I'm gonna say this because you're gonna get mad because it's true. Black folks overall are not the greatest critical thinkers in the world. And I'm talking about critical thinking. Don't get your little panties up in uproar. Don't get your Spider-Man underoos in a bunch. It's the facts. Black folks are not the greatest critical thinkers in the world. We're the worst. Now, emotional thinkers, we hit the top of the charts. As far as critical thinking, we come nowhere near the top 10. Wanna know why? Look at our past. It's because what we've been fed, what we're used to. We're not used to critical thinking. Like I said, there was there's a, there's a, some the, the few of us that said about that Michael Kors ad that were like, hold up, man, this don't seem right. Dude just signed Nicki Minaj to to a you know he's a businessman. Granted, there's a, probably a lot of white folks that probably think like that. Sterling said it. You're going to use Hill figure said it. But at the same time, not all of them are saying that, and not all of them think like that. Don't forget, you got to be you just, like you got you got the world at your fingertips. If you choose not to use it, whose fault's that? So, the basic lesson of the day here is, and I keep telling you this and others have told you this, you have to do your own research. Don't go off of your, don't go off of your faith-based emotion. Go off of what's tangible, what you can prove. But like I said, when I, when I went there, I posted, I was in, when I was in a group, I posted the links where like, this is what they say, and the site, the site that you got this off of is a fake news site. But they still wanted to believe, and that was my point. They're going to believe what they're going to believe anyway. Right, wrong, or different. So all you can do is do your best. And if, and if people want to live with like pigs and shit, flush the toilet on them. I'm out. Peace.